Did you know that you can take water and a little bit of energy from the sun and make your own chemical energy? Okay, let's hop in. We got a solar energy experiment that we're doing and Dick and Amanda are gonna show us all about it. First, we have to pick up the supplies. That looks pretty good. <laughs> We are driving through downtown Chicago to pick up all the supplies to build this. Solar fuel generator is what we're, we're building. What did you say? <laughs> nice. All right, let's go. Turns out you can get everything you need to build our solar fuel generator at Radio Shack and Walgreens. I think the thing that's most amazing to me is that you can pick up a solar panel just at an electronic shop like this, and then you can go ahead and do your own experiment. Oh, well, we need the solar panel. Mechanical pencil lead. Yeah. These are the alligator clips. Rah, rah, rah. It's a tube with a seal on the top. And then you need water. So tap water is going to work better than bottled water. Now that we've acquired our supplies, all we need is a nice sunny spot. And what a better place to set up than next to a solar charging station overlooking the city of Chicago. So Manny and I are here with uh, a very simple experiment that we want to do. We convert light energy ultimately to chemical energy. Light energy into chemical energy. Back. So here, it's going to absorb the sunlight, convert it to electrical energy, and we're going to use that energy to split water and make hydrogen and oxygen. Then, Dick and Amanda set up the experiment. They poured tap water into a glass. Then, they cut two pieces of tubing about an inch long and capped the top with a stopper. They then inserted the mechanical pencil graphite into the stopper. When that was done, they took out the solar panel, made sure the alligator clips were attached to the wires, and clipped them onto the graphite. Finally, they put the open ends of the tubes in the water. So by hooking up a system like this, we're able to electrolyze water through what's basically a closed circuit. You see, as the sun hits the solar panel, electrons will start to flow through the system. On one electrode, electrons will go to the hydrogen atoms to form hydrogen gas. On the other electrode, the circuit will take electrons from the oxygen atoms to form oxygen gas. So we get oxygen and hydrogen. So those are two products of the splitting, the water splitting reaction. You can see the bubbles starting to go up. And the reason we have the tube is that these bubbles should move up and start collecting at the top and pushing the water out. So that's the whole premise behind the solar fuels, is that we want to generate a fuel from the sun for use when the sun's not shining. The applications for this are what's important. You see, you could have fuel cells like this in an electric car, and then the only byproduct you'd get is water dripping out. Or if astronauts could find water on asteroids, they could create their own rocket fuels. Zero, booster ignition, and liftoff of discovery. So there you go, an experiment to show how you can take the sun's energy and convert it into chemical energy that you can use at a later time. Pretty cool, huh? And if you'd like more information, you can go to untamedscience.com. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube.